everyone. Welcome to Wednesday Night Live Crafting. How are you all? Hope you've had a good week so far. Um, beautiful day today, lots of sunshine around. Um, let me just see if I can get you up on my um, on my device just so I can see comments, make sure I'm going live in the right place. Hi Mel, how are you going? So let me know if you're here, give me a wave, say hello. You know the drill, if you've been here before. If you're watching this on replay and you want to leave some comments, then that's fine too. I will always go back and check, check for comments and answer any questions. Hi Sonia. So yes, it was a beautiful day, wasn't it Mel? It was really nice outside, a bit of sunshine believe we're going to get some rain tonight but um, that it's going to be gone by the morning so um, hopefully that that will um, will ring true and we'll wake up in the morning and it won't be raining oh I'm on the big TV tonight Sue well <laughs> I've finally made it I'm on TV <laughs> is this my 15 seconds of fame you um, never thought I'd actually be up on the TV I think that's a bit scary. Glad I'm not you're not seeing my face and all my grey hair. But you know, I am so desperate to uh, get out of this lockdown and get nails and hair done. I just cannot wait. They are the top two things on my list. Oh, and visiting my family, of course. Um, but after visiting my family, they're the top two things on my list. Hi, Roz. How are you going? Okay, so we won't fluff around too much tonight. I'll just give us another couple of minutes just for chance for people to come on. So as you can see, we're going to be using the um, Artistic in Expressions Suite tonight. Um, so we're going to predominantly be using the dies and the paper. Um, and we're um, going to be doing a technique called the Floating Strip Technique which some of you may have seen before, but hopefully it'll be new to some of you. Um, <laughs> oh, I love that, Rob. Ros sporting the Cruella de Vil look with my grey streaks. <laughs> I've got like a zebra stripe right down the middle of my head. Like it's just, yeah, it's not pretty. So um, best I, you know, best I don't show you my face until we can have that remedied. All right, look, we'll, um, I think we'll get started and um, so we can make it make it a quick one tonight. Um, oh, hi, Carol. You had to heat up your dinner. So is it another fantastic dinner that your son's been cooking for you? Um, I've been seeing some of the posts that you've been putting up and seeing the beautiful food that Tim's been um, cooking for you. You are so lucky to have a son who... A, he can cook like that, and B, is actually prepared to cook for his mum. Um, I keep threatening my kids that I'm going to um, make them cook one night a week and that they have to, you know, plan and shop. And um, my older son, Lachlan, keeps telling me that I hope you like tin spaghetti. So <laughs> I don't like tin spaghetti, so I'm a bit actually a bit cautious about um, getting them to actually do it. I, who knows what I might get. But it looks like um, Tim's really... Um, serving you up some magnificent meals I saw something earlier in the week was it a bird's nest um, I was a bit confused about what it was but it really looked really yummy so feel free when we're out of lockdown to send him over here and he can do some cooking for me <laughs> um, I'll be happy to to sample his dishes if he needs someone to test them on all right so you're having leftover Indian rice that you cooked well that's a disappointment Anyway, let's get started. So floating strip technique. So we're going to be starting off with our beautiful DSP. Let me just get that out of the way. Put these things to the side for now. So I've only, I haven't bought out all the sheets today because I'm predominantly going to be using these ones. But I just love this paper. I actually haven't used it enough. It's um, got such beautiful designs with that sort of Oh, excuse me, my dinner's repeating on me. I had satay chicken. Um, that beautiful sort of um, alcohol re sort of 
look to it with that gold, almost like a gold leaf through it. You see that in the, I don't know if you can see that in the in the um the camera how how shiny that is. So we're going to be using that. So what I did was I started with a small piece like this. So I sort of hacked into my hacked into the paper. So I used a bit of this one, and also I've cut down a um, a small piece of this one. And then what I proceeded to do was to cut strips. So I've cut a whole lot of um, strips of that pattern paper. So that's the obviously the back of one side. But um, so they're um, one centimetre wide by 10 centimetres long. Um, and the, only, the length is actually determined by the, the type of project that I'm going to make. Um, but um, depending on depending on um, what how big your finished um, project is going to be sort of depends on how long you cut your strips. But this is a fantastic technique for getting rid of all of those little um, strips that you end up when you know you cut down your DSP to use on your um, to use on your card fronts. And you, I always have a whole heap of strips left over. I don't know about you, but um, I always have heaps heaps left over so this is a really good technique for doing that um, and it's or you can just use it um, you can just use cardstock cut up cardstock and and do it with cardstock as well so the other thing I'm going to use is a piece of our window sheet so like um, the acetate I've got things sticking on it there okay and I've already cut this down to um, 9.5 by 13.8 so it's a centimeter smaller than what um, a regular card base front would be um, and it's a little bit bigger than what my end um, project is going to be so and I'll show you why that we're going to do that later so I'm going to bring in my silicon mat and what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to adhere all of these strips to my um, to my piece of acetate so first of all I'm actually just going to sort of line them up try and work out try and work out with some um, how I like them before I actually stick them down so the other way that you can do this if you're using a um, if you're actually cutting you're not using leftover strips and you're cutting down an actual sort of um, piece of DSP the size of the window sheet is to actually um, cut your strips and then keep them in the order that you cut them if you want them to to stay looking like the um, the piece of DSP that you're using but in this case I actually like to to mix it up a little bit so I'm not too concerned about keeping them well they're actually from a couple of different patterns so um, it doesn't really matter anyway, but um, I'm not too fussed about keeping them in in the same order that they were they were in when um, before I cut them. Sorry, I'm waffling on a bit here. So really, this is just about sort of trying to make sure you're happy with the um, with the end result. You know, and that you're happy, like if you, you know, if you wanted an ombre sort of effect. Um, if you're using, obviously, um, card stock, you could have, you know, um, different colours and be following a, be following a certain, sort of a certain pattern of colours. I might just pop that one in there and then I'm just going to slide those over here to the side. Oops. Didn't really keep that very very good order. Now I actually like to use um, liquid glue um, for this technique um, but you could use any type of adhesive um, and you could actually put a um, sheet of our adhesive sheet on the back of your um, pattern paper before you actually cut them into strips but like I said I like to use liquid glue and I will show you why I like to use liquid glue I'm not seeing um, comments for they're not staying up for some reason tonight so not sure why that is so um, 
So if I miss, I have to stop occasionally to see the comments. So I'm going to start by, let me just move this up a little bit so we're more in the light. I'm going to start by just putting some liquid glue on the back of that first piece. And there's a couple of different ways that you can do this. Um, but I think one of the tips I would give you is not to use too much liquid glue because you don't want it oozing out all over the place. So you're going to start right at the very base of that piece of acetate um, and you're going to have a little bit of overhang on either side which we will trim off later. And the reason that I like to use liquid glue is because you're sticking it onto acetate for a few seconds you've got that little bit of wiggle room so it will allow you to line it up properly. So if you were using say um, um, seal or you know um, tear and tape or something like that I think once you stuck it down then that would be the end of it and where you stick it is where it would have to stay whereas the um, the liquid glue just gives me a few seconds to actually um, move it up or down so that um, I get my positioning right so you'll see I'm leaving just a probably a couple of mil gap in between each of the sheets. The other way that you can do this, if you find that I'm using tweezers here because I don't want to get sticky all over my fingers, is that you could actually just run some Tombow straight along the acetate and then put your strip down. You just want to make sure that you don't get any in that sort of two mil gap in between your strips. You don't want to actually be seeing any liquid glue in there in that spot there. Which I've got a bit oozing out there. So I really I'd really um, advise you to be not heavy handed with your with your glue. Oh, hi, Ma Margaret, how are you going? Just... So we're just going to keep working our way. Actually, I'm not working in the order that I put them down there, am I? So like I said, you could do this with, with cardstock. And you could do it also... Um, changing up the um, width of these strips. They don't all have to be the same size. I actually um, cut them all at one centimetre, but you could um, you could cut them at different different widths. I probably wouldn't go any more than about half an inch, um, but um, but you know you could change them up and you could have some skinny ones and some thick ones. Um, I'll actually go, that's a light one, um, and that would um, add some interest to, to your end result. So just oops. and you're going to go all the way to the top. Don't know if you can actually see the top of that that acetate there in the, in the camera. So, what did everybody get up to today? Anybody get out? Managed to get out and enjoy that beautiful sunshine? It was a um, another day for the physio for me so I got to go up into the go up into the Dandenongs up into the hills to to see my physio which was really nice it was so beautiful up there I saw um I actually saw Puffing Billy today sitting in the sitting in the um the station I mean I don't think it's actually running but it was um it was sitting in the station at at Emerald today 
I remember when my kids used to go on that when they were little. Many, many years ago now. Well, that was a long walk, Carol. Two and a half hours. So I'm actually just going to put this strip is going to hang over the top. And I am going to trim it down so it might work out that I don't end up even having much of that last strip. And of course, the reason that I'm doing this on my silicon mat is so that A, I don't get um, adhesive all over my uh, workspace, but also, of course, it's not going to stick to my to my silicon mat. Oops, so that isn't quite staying on the top there. It's probably not going to matter because I think I'm going to cut that top piece off, so I might just I might just ditch that. Okay, so that's that's our what our end what it looks like after we've finished attaching all of our of our strips and you can see you can see through that um, see through that window sheet there in between each of the of the strips and that's what's going to give us our floating look when we um, when we get further on in the project so we're going to trim off those um, those bits that are hanging over the edge now I I would recommend that you wait and let this dry um, before you actually go doing anything else with it, before you start trimming these things off. I would put it to the side and let it dry. <laughs> Excuse me. So I'm just going to show you um, quickly what I did before I put this to the side. And so I, you can you can do this one of two ways. You can either just go along and um, cut your strips off like this. Of course, if you're adhesive is not dry you will have to go back later and um, clean your scissors because your paper snips because they will have adhesive on them the other thing that you could do is if you wait until it's completely dry then you can do this with your trimmer or with a guillotine but I would definitely wait until it's completely dry before I do that because once you start chopping or running your blade down, you don't want to drag these um, edges together because they're not quite dry. Okay, so when you turn that over, you see that we've, we've trimmed it off. So I've actually got one that I prepared earlier, so you won't have to wait until that one's dry. So let's move that out of the way. So that's our final one there that I did earlier and that's all dry now <laughs> I'm going to leave that this shape so I've trimmed off all of the excess acetate at the top and I've trimmed it down to the size that I want on my card which is actually nine centimeters by 13.3 so it's one and a half centimeters um, frame around the edge so one half centimeter smaller than my card base so I'm going to bring in my card base so you can just see that just using a basic white thick card base and that's it sitting on the front there so you can see that there uh, so then I went ahead earlier and cut one of the um, dies one of the artistic dies so those beautiful leaves there from this set here which is part of the um, is it expressions in ink sweet and I've just uh, used this big die here and I've cut that out of gold foil so just our gold foil sheet um, just ran that through my stamp cut and cut and emboss machine and got this um, beautiful um, set of leaves here so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to attach those onto the front there so what, before I do that, I was just going to talk about what else you can do with it. So like I said, I've cut this down to the size that I want. Now, if you wanted to, you could actually die cut that now. So you could, um, if you wanted a rectangle or you wanted a particular shape, you can use your dies and just um, lay your die on top of this and then run it through your die machine. So you could, you know, cut a circle from it. And that was what I was saying earlier about... Um, the size of your strips, the width of your strips really depends on your end, what you're going to do with it in the end. So if you were going to do that in a square or a circle, you might only you might measure your circle and only do your strips a little bit longer than that. So um, so now I'm just going to pop that on there. 
and I think I'm, I'll just use liquid glue to do that as well. I'll just bring back in my, my silicon mat and I'm just going to just going to put a few dabs of liquid glue all over my um, my die. This is probably um, this would have worked better if I'd actually put adhesive sheet or well, not better but you could have put adhesive sheet on the back of this and um, would have made um, it a bit easier to attach than than using liquid glue but I just I pretty much use liquid glue for everything it's always sitting on my on my desk and you know adhesive sheets are in in my um in my stash in my drawer and I often don't think about them until I've finished finished my project then think oh yeah I should have done that I should have put adhesive sheet on the back before I cut it the other tip with Tombow is when you're doing something like this is to just give it um, a few a couple of minutes to actually go tacky before you um, attach it to your project uh, and that will mean that you don't get that um, that liquid glue oozing out everywhere so if you just wait for um, for a couple of minutes for it to go tacky that will um, that will be much what am I trying to say? That will be much easier. Goodness, I can't even find my words tonight. Let me just have a sip of my water. That might help. So, Sonia, you're having pizza. What sort of pizza are you having? <coughs> Do you have a favourite pizza? We were always having this debate in the house because I love Hawaiian. Of course, the rest of the people in my family think that pineapple's not something that you should have on pizza. So I always end up having to either have my own small one or even if I go half, you know, half-half with someone else in the family, they're always complaining that, you know, pineapple ends up on their pizza. <laughs> A sip of wine might help, Roz, Okay. <laughs> Look, the thing is, if I if I started drinking wine before I um, started these lives, you know, who knows what we might end up with at the end of the day. All right, so I'm just um, this probably is still a little bit wet, but I'm just going to pick it up and pop it down into my very gently. Don't want to spread glue there where I don't need it. Okay, so um, I like to I like to construct my um, card mats before I actually put them on my card base. So I'll sort of do everything on this, um, predominantly everything before I put it onto the card base. So the other thing I'm going to use is the um, ephemera pack that comes as part of this suite. So. Um, in that pack, there's um, all of these really um, lovely um, gold foil um, frames, leaves, berries, a few different sorts of um, frames. And I'm just going to use this one down here. So I'm just going to gently, sorry if I'm, I'm blinding you with the, the glare off that, that gold. So I'm actually going to use this, be using this frame and I'm going to keep out those, um, the sequins that um, come in it as well. So these are almost like these, they're clear, well they they sort of pick up a bit of a pink tinge to them, but actually when you put them near um, other colours, they sort of tend to take on the colour of um, the, the, the project that you're working on. So I'm actually going to be using those as well. Okay, so I'm just going to pop this centre out here. So we've just got these very, very delicate, delicate frames. Now you could just leave it like that and you could use the whole frame, the whole frame on there. So I'm just going to pop that, probably could have put that over a little bit. Look, I've still got some wiggle room. It's the beauty of um, liquid glue. So I've still got a little bit of wiggle room. 
to move that over there. So I'm just going to pop that in there. But I think I'm actually going to pop these these little layers on the in the middle out as well. So you just need to be careful that you don't that you don't tear tear that very delicate frame. So don't be a bullet again. Just take it slow. I didn't get my bin out tonight, so now I've got a little pile of pile of bits on the side there. So I'm just going to use that there. And I'm actually going to stamp on the back of this hexagon that came out of the middle because I want my um, I want to be stamping on white here. Um, so I thought I'll just turn that over and use it. I haven't tried this, so um, it'll be We'll be winging it because it's actually a little bit um, glossy so I'm not quite sure how how stamping on that is going to go but we'll give it a go and see see how it works and I'm actually just going to be using the hollow out of the um, coordinating stamp set here and I'm going to stamp I think in mint macaron so there's a um, series of different uh, greens that coordinate with this particular suite so we have the the Just Jade, the Mint Macaron, I think this is Pear Pizzazz and maybe Evening Evergreen and the Shaded Spruce. So there's a whole range of um, colours there that you could you could choose from. I'm just going to use the, um, the Mint Macaron. So the thing about stamping on a glossy surface is you have to be really careful that you don't, A, you don't let it slip and B, you don't smudge it after you've stamped it. Yeah, look, that's not too bad, but I'm not super, super, um, you know, you can sort of see that, I'm not sure how that's going to dry. You can probably see there in the um, the camera how it, um, it's sort of not as, it's not as solid as I would like, and it's tend to sort of actually spread a little bit, but we'll just, um, might need to give that a shot with the heat gun to actually um, dry that. But we'll just put it to the side for the moment and we'll just con I'll construct the rest of the card and we'll see how it goes. Um, all right, so now what we're going to do is I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to put dimensionals on the back of this. And the good thing about that having those strips of solid strips of paper there is that you'll be able to hide them behind that DSP. So I'm hoping, having cut them to one centimetre, that my dimensionals will fit inside that strip and you won't actually see them from the other side. So um, if you went with, um, with a strip of DSP that was a bit smaller than um, one centimetre, then you might have to cut your dimensionals in half. or you could use mini dimensionals. I think that's that's a little bit narrower, that one at the top. So I'll just come down one. Hi, Marg, how are you going? Hawaiian with mushrooms, Sonia. Oh, that's not something I've tried before. Yeah, look, I have to say, you know, I'm not... Um, there's, Matt's a vegetarian, so... But he does eat salami, so he has a vegetarian... Everyone really la always laughs at him because he has a vegetarian with salami, um, which is sort of a bit of a... Um, what do you call it? It's a, well, it's not sort of something you would expect. I can't find the word I'm looking for, but yeah, you know, like, um, and look, you know, I, I like the vegetarians because I have all of that, you know, all the vegetables on them. But, um, but like I said, my preference is for, for Hawaiian. 
the best I think is when we make pizzas at home and then I can just cut up stuff and put it all out and then everybody can put their own why is this bagging not coming off um, everybody can put their own together and they can have whatever they like on it so I've got all my backings off there I'm just going to turn that over and I'm going to attach that there to my card front so this is where we get the the name for this technique this floating strip so of course once you attach that and you can actually see through that see the um the basic white card stock behind that through the the acetate it looks like those dsp strips are like floating and because our dimensionals are hidden you can't actually see what's what's giving it that dimension all right so that's that's still not that's still not 100% dry so I'm just going to grab my heat gun it's here in the drawer might be just give that a blast with the heat gun just give me a sec to plug that in That's something I should have tried earlier shouldn't I to see whether that was actually going to going to dry so I'm going to just pick that up with my tweezers and just excuse the noise of the heat gun here while I just give it a blast So that is drying it off pretty well. I'd still be a little bit careful about smudging it. The chances that I do, what's the chances that I do that, okay? By the end of this video, we'll see if I've smudged the, the sentiment there. But I really wanted to, um, I really wanted to use the piece out of there. The other thing that you could do if you if you had you know if you don't mind fussy cutting is you could actually use this as a template and just cut yourself a piece of um, basic white exactly the same shape I think we used to have a punch that was this shape that's retired but I don't think I have it anymore so um, that hexagon sort of shaped um, so if you've got that punch that might be a that might be a solution as well all right so I'm just going to Yep, that's hot. It's pretty good. So I'm actually just going to position this here just so that I can work out exactly where I want it. I'm just going to use, I might actually use some stamp and seal, some seal on the back of that just to, um, rather than um, liquid glue. I'm just going to hold that, just hold that there so that I can make sure that I'm not too far over. And then you can just use a tiny bit of probably Tombow or so your liquid glue or maybe even if you were to um, actually might just try the seal on that too and see how we go with just stuff the only problem with seal is you're going to have that little bit in the middle there that you'll need to poke out these are so fine that you do have to be you do have to be strategic about where you put your where you put your adhesive Okay, so that seems to have, I mean, you only need it to be probably a little bit up there. I might just pop a dab of, just a tiny, tiny dab of Tombow there. I might just dab that off with my finger. 
the good thing about the liquid glue is that it does dry clear so um, if you've got a little bit too much you're probably not going to see it when it dries there you go Is that frame Okay, so now all we've got left is to add in some of our sequins. So let me just um, have my take a pick tool and I'm just going to so they look a little bit pink when you put them down on the um, onto the white, but once you put them on colored colored cardstock, it will actually um, sort of take on the on the color of the um, the hue of the, the cardstock around it. I might just actually just pop one down there. I'm thinking three might be enough. There you go, that's our our finished card, our floating strip technique. So the other thing with that you can do is and I've got a bit left over from when I trimmed earlier. So this is what I trimmed off when I cut off my um, edge earlier. I actually had a couple of them, so I've been this one. Um, and you could actually then just use that to decorate the inside of your card, because you know I don't like to, to leave my cards naked on the inside. So you could just run that down the, down the side there, or you could pop it across the bottom and then trim it off. I actually quite like it down the side there, so I might just I might just pop that in now and um, I'm actually going to leave the I'm not going to stamp a sentiment on the inside because I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with this card yet so I'll leave that until until I have a need for the card It just gives us a little bit of interest there that coordinates with the with the front of our card. So hope everybody enjoyed that. That you'll actually give that technique a go. Um, I'd love to see it. What you make with it if you do. So housekeeping. I don't think we have anything to. Oh yes, there was a. Um, refresh to the clearance rack today so um if you're looking for some bargains there are there are a few things there there's the beautiful um butterfly bijou paper um that was um so hard to come by um a few months ago that came out with our brilliant butterfly um dies and um so there's some of that i did see on the clearance rack so there's some some bargains there up to 60 percent off but the stuff does re go really fast because of the um the heavily discounted items so if there's anything you're looking for i'd get over and have a look be quick about it um there's also i posted up on my facebook page yesterday there was a new kit that launched today so the love santa tag kit so um there's a, um, a new kit there. All the details are up on my Facebook page there. So in a post from yesterday. Um, so that went on sale from today. So that also has, as well as the tag kit, it has some coordinating um, food safe um, cello bags that go with that. Um, so you can actually um, bag up some treats and put a nice tag on them for Christmas. Um, and the other thing I wanted to talk to you all about was the new suite that is coming out as a sneak peek from the next catalog which is Eden's Garden so this is not it's available to demonstrators at the moment but it's not available to customers until the 2nd of November so this is a suite that includes a um, stamp set and a die bundle so a, um, a beautiful wreath type but on a, a rectangle rather than a um, rather than a circle and this lovely um, border die here, which I can't wait to get my hands on. There is some um, pattern paper, so in 12 by 12. Um, there's some cotton paper, <coughs> which um, I haven't actually, I haven't got my hands on it yet, so I can't actually tell you too much about it. But hopefully, as soon as I've got my product, I'll be able to show you exactly what it's like. 
these beautiful gems. So I don't know if you can see in that in that picture there, but they come in um, cherry cobbler and soft succulent, and they have almost like this teardrop or eye um, shaped um, gem, as well as the round in two different sizes. Um, so that's a hot. That's a whole suite that will be available from the second of November. So as soon as I get it, I will um, start having a play with it. So look out for some for some projects made with that suite. So thanks everybody for joining me tonight. I hope you enjoyed the card, and um, that you all have a good week. Stay safe and healthy. And I will catch you all again next Wednesday for Wednesday Night Live Crafting. Have a good week, everybody. Thanks for joining me. Bye-bye.